What is going on guys, this is Miasin. So today I wanted to make a video going over all the newer relevant cards from Legacy of Destruction, especially the new decks and just how impactful they are in the metagame. Because obviously the ban list wasn't really big, so it's not like the fire decks are that much worse, meaning that there's a world in which we keep seeing the fire decks dominate the format even more, even after Legacy of Destruction. But with that being said, people are already starting to see a lot of result from, uh, you know, locals with Tenpai Dragon, Melodious, and all those other decks, so I still wanted to go over all the new cards. But before this video starts, I would really appreciate you guys if you could smash the like and subscribe button, but also a huge, huge, massive shout outs to Inspire TCG, my sponsors, as well as Dueling Guard. Please check them out and use the coupon code YASIN666 for 5% off your next order. They have the best sleeves, the best play mats, the best deck boxes. So yeah, they are really worth looking into. I would really recommend. And with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, so the first deck that I wanted to cover was the Yugi deck. So it's not like super uh, meta, but it doesn't suck whatsoever. It's like a decent rogue option. It's it's pretty nice. And if pilot it correctly it can definitely catch people off guard but with there can only be one going uh, to one this deck is a little worse at you know kind of slowing the game down because the deck is kind of a little too fair it's a mid-range deck it's not like a go big or go home kind of combo deck it doesn't really make unbreakable boards there was a lot of like really interesting cards in the deck you can use this on the battle phase to pretty much end the battle phase immediately now this isn't like the best uh, kind of interruption against your opponent but against a deck like Tenpai Dragon ending the battle phase is huge and you can banish it from the graveyard to do that it's not like the on-field effect it's like if you're a monster battles and you got this in the grave during the damage calc you basically just skip the battle phase so yeah it's a really nice card and it definitely will make the deck uh, good enough to compete with tenpai dragon and that's i mean that, that's always something and the rest of the deck like i said doesn't suck like there's silence towards the future that allows you to drop to six cards but although it's kind of like card of sanctity from the anime it also helps your opponent you can do some nice things it's like i said it's a cute deck i don't think it's gonna top ycs's it can definitely top regionals for sure guaranteed all right after that we got the rika cards i actually think those cards are unplayable at least right now they're way too bad because they work with three of the worst types in Yu-Gi-Oh! Insect, Plant, and Reptile. Insect is that kind of, art, I mean, not even archetype, but type that can easily become broken if Konami gives them, like, gives them, like, actually unfair support because Retaliating C is a really good card. And if they ever unban Maxi, which they can't, Maxi would become super searchable. So obviously, they have to really be, like, careful with their card design. And because of that, these cards always end up being complete trash. Plant is kind of good, but to be fair, Eureka Sanavalon doesn't really need the Raika cards, or at least I don't think so. And the Reptile, like Ogdo Attic, it's not like that deck was insane anyways, so I don't even think it benefits that much of a Raika to the point where it becomes good against the rest of the field. So yeah, I would not really recommend wasting your time with Raika cards. It's not the best. And Ancient Gear, it's a decent wave of support, but the only real way to play Ancient Gear right now that isn't trash is with super heavy Samurai cards because they're both earth machines so there's like inherent synergy it's not like you're just play, splashing a super heavy samurai engine because wakoshi is a one card rank four and that gets yours nah 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 i definitely do not recommend playing ancient gear at least at the moment there is a new level two i believe ancient gear monster that will coming uh come out i think in infinite forbidden that card is pretty good but yeah the deck is just uh super nerfed for no reason like the monsters can never be special summon pretty much so yeah it's just annoying ashen the trash don't waste your time with these new cards they're, they're really not good at all Okay, Melodious is where it gets really interesting. I want to say this is probably the deck that got the best support from the set that already existed before. It's not like Tenpai Dragon, which is brand new. Melodious already existed, and it was really, 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 really bad. Ostinato has always been a good card by design. You know, it's a branded fusion that doesn't restrict you and isn't once per turn. So if you get Ashton on Ostinato, you can use Ostinato again. That's a little filthy. <clears throat> and also, again, you can still summon, like, non-Melodious monsters during the turn you use Ostinato. Which is pretty insane. So we're seeing people not only splash the Melodious uh, Engine in some, some random decks like Voices Voice or Snake or whatever. Uh, but obviously the pure Melodious deck has real potential as well. So that's definitely something that you should look into. Definitely make sure that you read the new cards. Because the new uh, Pendulum Monsters, they can even be played in a Pendulum deck. Or again, as an engine or in the in the deck itself. That can Fusion Summon, Pendulum Summon, XC Summon, Link Summon. It can do quite a lot and it can play with one card and it can play 15 hat shops. It's definitely no joke. It's, it's a real deck. It's not just a cute deck. I would definitely consider it a tier 1 deck. Obviously, I have to redo my whole tier list video. But yeah, this deck would definitely one of the, uh, be one of the best ones for sure. Especially if piloted correctly because this deck does look really complicated to play. The correct sequencing looks like a nightmare. The deck does beat Nibiru. Uh, you just have to really know how to play. But yeah, there's infinite combo sequences. I'm a huge fan of Melodious. So again, 
keep that in consideration when you are deck building. Try to make sure that you have ways to beat the deck when you're going first and going second. To be fair, Tenpai Dragon, you know, that deck loses to D-Bear. Uh, Melodious also kind of loses to D-Bear, so it should be fine. Alright, speaking of which, on the list we got Tenpai Dragon. This is the most obvious deck to cover, obviously, because everybody's talking about it. It's kind of a budget deck, uh, except for uh, Trident Dragon. It's the only expensive card, I believe, in the extra deck, but the main deck itself, I think it's dirt cheap. Uh, you don't really need anything other than, like, I mean, the staples that you already should be having, like all the hand shops, the prosperities, all those cards, and, like, the generic links in the extra deck, like, I don't know, like, Hita, Princess, Raging Phoenix, Zelantis, Iratic Seal, a few Dragon Synchro Monsters that you probably already have. The newer cards should not be too hard to get. And the type Tenpai Dragon themselves, I think there's, like, one Ultra... And then everything else is like super common or like it's super cheap to get. So yeah, th this deck will probably be um, seeing a lot of play and obviously knowing how to beat it is crucial if you want to succeed this format. It is a battle phase uh, centered, uh, well, battle phase based deck. So obviously if you deny them from their battle phase, you don't really need like negates to beat them. Although negates can be fine. Their field spell does protect them from being uh, affected by card effects during the main phase uh, one. So that's uh, a little annoying. And obviously they can play a lot of hand shops and board breakers so also keep that in consideration but yeah 10 by dragon is clearly a very good deck it's just that the i want to say the high level players they're not considering decks like 10 by dragon because those decks only have like two layers of play right you normal summon a monster and then you may have like one extender if that doesn't work out and that extender can also otk so you can't play through like one perfectly used interruption and obviously you got like the rest of your hand shops that make it so that your opponent might not be able to b break a uh, build a board but then when those situations don't happen you are playing a very just weak deck by itself and without the field spell your monsters all look very vulnerable which is just a little annoying so that's what i really don't like about tenvi dragon and also it has it really thrives off of catching people off guard but if people know that you're on tenpai they make you go first the best board that you can make is heretic seal pass that's not super great it's a little weak actually especially if you're playing against the combo decks like the fire decks they will eat you for breakfast, and if they got called by the grave, then you mega die. Like, you're gonna be in a really bad spot. I'd consider it a tier 1 deck, maybe a little worse, actually, than Melodious, even though that's not the popular uh, opinion. Now, a deck that got ridiculous support would be Centurion. Uh, Centurion Gargoyle is just another Emet 6, uh, but a little better, so I do like it. I don't think it plays into Nibiru, so yeah, everything about it is just nice. Uh, wake up centurion is uh the reason why you got one card combos that you can use to beat shifter because you no longer have to rely on the field spell to like place a centurion card uh, because that makes you send a card from the hand to the grave not discard uh, but with this card you can just get like your level four level eight monster it's not a tuner what really changed with the new wave of support is that centurion can now play shifter that's all you really need to know because there was that and there was also the centurion I, they changed the name of the, the this card, but when this card is special summon, you can search your deck for any Centurion card for Redact Your Hand, so that's already arguably better than drawing a card. And you can also place one of your non-Synchro Centurion monsters that is banished on your graveyard face up in your spell and shop zone uh, during the end phase. Whereas um, the other one, the uh, Legatia, was only from the hand or grave, so if you got hit by a DD Crow, Bestial, or if you're under Shifter... Uh, Legatia doesn't do anything, with her, whereas uh, Arcoella does do something, which makes it uh, even more appealing. So I do like this card quite a lot. Uh, now we've got the Lightsworn cards, uh, remarkable cards. They're very, very good, but Lightsworn is... It, it can only be played as a pile deck, so it's a combo deck. It doesn't really have the ability to play hand shops other than Bestials, right? Because Bestials, they're, they're extenders. They're not just hand shops. You bet... You banish yourself the majority of the time, and then you summon Lubalion, you, you place the Regained, and then you keep drawing more cards. You make Erratic Seal so that you counter Nibiru, or, or you rush for, you rush for an Appaloosa. You can make the Charmer Monster, so there's a lot of appeal to playing the Bestials. But everything else, they're just going to conflict. They're not going to be mail, uh, good to mail or good to draw even when you go first. And you want as much gas as possible. And the Lightsworn cards, ironically, they don't even work that that well with, like, the old Lightsworn cards. A lot of them are still really, really, really bad. Like, Lumina is, a like, a terrible card in the Lightsworn deck. Especially if you... Well, I mean, if you, if you play the deck correctly, because Lumina can only use its effect while you already have a Lightsworn card in your grave. But usually, you're going to be normal summoning Lumina, so you want... You want your normal summon to be something that gets your stuff going, and Lumina is definitely not one of those cards. Yeah, if you really want to, like, capitalize off of the new support, you're gonna have to play this deck again as a big combo deck, and you make yourself vulnerable to a lot of just degenerate strategies if you do that. But if you keep playing against, like, 
I don't know, uh, rogue-ish or like mid-range base decks or control decks, you should be able to like blow them out and just destroy them if you go second. And if you go first, your boards are pretty much unbreakable the majority of the time. So it's definitely a really nice deck. It does lose to Shifter, it does lose a little bit to Bestials, but not even that much. And it doesn't lose to Nibiru or Drill and Logbird. It's honestly a very resilient deck. I've already made a bunch of combos on this deck, and I can keep going if you guys are interested. Anyways, next up, we've got the Yubel support. Very, very, very good wave of support. Uh, this deck does have a decent matchup against Tenpai Dragon because they do struggle at just removing the Yubel monster from the board. They would have to, like, do something weird, like, go into a synchro that sucks in order to, like, remove it. But then they can probably no longer OTK because they got rid of two Tenpai Dragon monsters in order to synchro summon that. So it's just... It's just bad for them, which is obviously good for you. So if their hand shops can't deal with your stuff, then you should be 100% fine. So that's what I really like about the Ubel deck. Um, it's just, it has a lot of good matchups. It's still very good under Shifter. It has an unlosable Flunderese matchup because, again, all their monsters always have to be normal sum uh, summoned and attack. So they always take the damage when you reflect everything with the Ubels. Uh, they um, don't really have anything to shut down with the uh, Empen. Because you can also summon the monsters in defense, you don't really need to Link Summon. Uh, and your monsters can be destroyed by battles, so their only real form of removal would be Rise Up and Unexplored Winds. So if you got Cosmic Cyclone and Imperm, which should be at least in your main and side deck, then you are never losing to Flunderies. It's not like you can... I mean, it's not even like you lose that much to Featherstorm either, because you can still at least survive and uh, do some nice things. So yeah, this, this deck is very good, and also it can play a lot of non-engine as well, and it can make some big boards if you're going first, but without Phantom of Yubel, it's not explosive enough, at least um, through Nibiru. And that's the reason why I don't necessarily recommend playing Yubel for a big event, but I at least recommend looking into the deck so that you know how to counter it, and also play it when Phantom of Yubel does come around. Now next up, we've got the one of the just like support already existing decks, Diabelzi of the Original Sin, that's a good card. You can play it either in Sinful Spells based strategies or in the Illusion deck because it is an Illusion monster. And it's kind of like an anti-spell, but not really, because your opponent can use the card right away, but he just has to, like, set it. And that also affects you, if I recall correctly. Uh, but then when your opponent sets a card, then you can destroy a card on your field and one card your opponent controls. So if your opponent sets, a like, a, a Dark Ruler, for example, you can destroy it right away. And he can't use it from the hand. He has to set it first. So it's a it's a decent card, but it's not, like, um, it's not anything too crazy. Snake Eye Diabell Star, that card's not super insane. It doesn't suck either, like I said, but I don't really see how this card really changes that much in the Snake Eyes deck. I think you can keep playing the deck the exact same way. You don't even have to, like, consider this card. It's just another option, but it's not even, like, that great of an option. This new spell card right here, Blessing of the Voices Voice, is... Sorry, Voices Voice. It's not great either in the Voices Voice deck, honestly. It doesn't really add much. Uh, if anything, it makes your deck uh, less consistent. It just increases the uh, it improves the grind game quite a lot but it's not like voices voice ever had a grind game problem so in other words you're really just playing a win more it's also that you're adding one extra interruption on top of your board because now you're going seravis negate twice or something so yeah it's fine but it's uh, it's not that great so i'm not a big fan of blessing and finally we got, we got the white sword which is a uh, white lord it's a very good card for Skull Servant, but Skull Servant, not like the most insane deck either. But again, it's a very good card. I forgot what it really does for the deck. I mean, it allows you to foolish a lot. Uh, special summon a Skull Servant from the grave. Yeah, everything about it is good. So yeah, I will also be making a Skull Servant video very soon. Mark my words. But yeah, that's it for the um, for this video right here. Uh, again, more of the story. A lot of uh, good, uh, good cards and good decks are coming out from the set. Uh, oh, actually, I did forget. Uh, these are the two staples that I really, um, again, lo recommend looking into. There's Blink Out and Metal Chonios. I've already made a big video on Metal Chonios. And Blink Out is very simple. You can use it against Appaloosa, just return it back to the extra deck. Uh, you can also use it on yourself to, like, dodge Valor Imperm and also revive back the monster that was used for the Link Summon of that monster that you brought back, which is... Really good if you are playing uh, Link 1s in your deck, really. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.